Thanksgiving Day. Decided to walk around and uh, see if I could sneak up on something because it's real wet. The ground is real quiet. And I find this nice big buck bedding area right in the middle of the Tag Alder Marsh. And on the other side of this, I know there's doe bedding. There's a clear cut that's probably four or five years old with some slashings in it. I just jumped a buck. Not a very big one. I jumped a buck out of here coming in. Um, so they're very wary, very spooky, and uh, very pressured. So I take my time. I'm just taking my time. See, I mean, the sign back here is fantastic. I'm on the Eau Claire County public land across the street from our land. So I'll come back on if I find anything else interesting. Sometimes it's difficult to identify what's buck bedding and what's doe bedding. But I think it's very safe to say that this is buck bedding in this marsh. You have to think like a pressured deer. If someone was trying to kill you, where would you go? <laughs> so, probably not in the middle of a field, right? going to go in the hardest places to get to. That's what we're doing here. So how do you find bucks on public land? You've got to find edges and terrain features coming together. Here we have this scrape right behind me and a slicken branch coming off this oak tree. And I have hardwoods, oak hardwoods, okay, behind me. And as I circle around, what you see over here is clear cut. This is all clear cut. Okay. And 75 yards that way is a big marsh. And so this trail, this major trail system, crossing all three major terrain features, that's what you're looking for when you're looking at a topo map, um, onyx or, or hunt wise or whatever. This is the, this is where you start. You start where terrain features and habitat changes all come together. And you will typically find buck sign. All right, guys, still on the Eau Claire County land here. I just came to the Cook Pipeline. If you go a quarter mile, one parcel, basically that way, um, we'd be back on our land here. But uh, um, this, is another good terrain spot, a d another change in terrain. You got hardwoods just back past that uh, little scrub oak here. We've got the pipeline and we've got major trail systems coming through here. A coyote just passed about 100 yards in front of me. I was talking to my brother on the phone though. So shout out to Uncle Wally. <laughs> um, so, and, and this being public land, some of the other things I'm looking for as I come through here is where have other hunters been or where are they? I'm looking for orange. I'm looking for orange. I'm looking for footprints. I'm looking for trees that may be chewed up from a climber going up and down it or from climbing sticks being tied to it for like saddle hunters and things like that. So, yeah, man. Um, be courteous on public land. There's a great possibility you're going to run on to other hunters. Even here where I'm, I'm basically on 1,600 acres. There could be hunters anywhere over here. We don't know where they access from necessarily, right? So we got to watch for other hunters and be courteous to not disrupt other people's hunting. Just thought I would give that piece of advice. You know, you don't want someone ruining your hunt by walking through the woods like, you know... It's a Sunday afternoon in the park, you know, so uh, share that courtesy with others. Here's another excellent terrain feature through these clear cut, through the slashing of where this clear cut, probably five years ago this was clear cut, they left some oaks standing. Maybe 15 to 20 mature oaks are standing back there. What does that mean? Um, in October, it's going to mean acorns. It's a food source. 
Um, it's also going to mean elevation. This is a place you can come in with a saddle or a climber. The difficulty is not getting skylined. All right. So I don't know if I would bow hunt those trees. I might rifle hunt because my range is greater than 35 yards. Um, but that's something else to look for. So even if you're not going to hunt out of those trees, look for trails going into that grove and find a pinch point to cut them off and ambush. Sometimes on public land, you will find private landowners who are adjacent to it, making improvements that really are good for everybody. For example, this ATV trail, I'm in about 100 yards from the pipeline now, and this trail just keeps on going. So let's just see where it goes. Um, because I'm sure it dead ends somewhere. Now, by law in Wisconsin, any stands that are on public land are open for public use. Um, they have to be temporary, but if you leave them, that means you can sit in them. So I'm just gonna see where this trail ends. And what I'm wondering is if there's a way to connect this trail to the road across from our house or from our land. Probably be some work in the springtime, but it might be worthwhile work because this whole area just looks great. I've killed more bucks in logged areas, hard access than I've killed in any other type of terrain. So this excites me. All right, so so far we've come down this trail and we have come to this fairly fresh scrape and licking branch here on the scrub oak. Super common. This is, I didn't walk very far, maybe 150 yards from the pipeline and I found this. So yeah, this is the kind of stuff you find on public land Deer want easy walking too, you know, and this is narrow, it's remote, and if it's unpressured, they'll use it like crazy. Well, I found where the trail leads, right there. Um, I'm right on the corner of two parcels of public land and private land. That, according to HuntWise, the GPS is public land, but within feet, maybe two, three meters at the most. So the trail continues, so let's see where it Well, goes. I'm at a fork in the road. I can continue that way, or I can go that way, which looks less improved, but is also the direction I need to go to get back to my nightstand. So and this now. is what we come to right here is a tree stand, approximately three and a half to four feet off the ground in a very tight area that actually it does look like a good crossing but you don't have a whole lot of shooting room here but this is effectively the end of the four-wheeler trail so now the decision is do I double back or do I shortcut it through the slashings to get back to the cabin I think I'm shortcutting it I could not be more in the thick of these slashings. I mean, all around me, just in the thick. I couldn't shoot if, if I had to save my life. <laughs> That's how thick it is. But I come to this little opening, this little pocket of grass here. Oops, my hand's blocking it. And right behind me, right here, see where this log is? All this is matted down. This is all buck bedding, all of it. I don't know how you would access this. You've got to find the trail systems coming out of here. Find the food sources and find them coming out. Got to play the wind. Lots to do. Just want to show you how thick this area is I'm walking through.
will be like some found footage, like Blair Witch. Ooh. I'm back to where I, um, about where I jumped that first buck in that bunny bedding area where I showed you the rub earlier. I want to show you this bed. I'm in a marsh, a grassy marsh. And I'm so positive this is a buck bed. Look at this. He found the one high spot right next to an evergreen. Just bed it down there where he would have full view of the marsh. Full view of the marsh and be protected from his back. The tag holders and the the tag holders are 15 yards behind his bed. And the tree is right on top of him. It's brilliant. Don't tell me deer aren't smart. More evidence of more evidence of buck activity. More beds in here. I'm only about 30 yards from the last bed. So here I am in the middle of gun season. Just finishing my walk through the public land. And I would say I learned a lot. However, the cost of that education is that the deer have learned also. I am sweating and I'm gonna have to change clothes before I go out to my stand for the night and I'm gonna have to do some scent proofing. Um, I've left a, a web of scent throughout a half a dozen, maybe 10 bedding areas. So, um, the deer are aware of my presence. However, I don't plan on coming back here. Probably not even this year. But I have an idea of what to expect for next year. Probably come in here shed hunting in the springtime. See what I see. But is Thanksgiving the ideal time to be scouting buck beds? No, not really. But like I said, my goal wasn't necessarily to find spots to hunt. Really, I was kind of still hunting, doing, hoping I could do a little spot and stalk. And if I jump something, our property's right across the road and my dad is set up. I'm ready for one to come across one of the main trails that comes off the road out of this property. So, um, you know, you could call it a wind bump, a drive, whatever. But um, here's the thing, the deer have so many advantages. They have a nose like a bloodhound. They have eyes almost as good as ours. Maybe not necessarily with color differentiation, but certainly with movement. And they have 270 degrees of vision to our 170 to 180 degrees. Um, and they're just incredibly cautious. What we have is reason. We have the ability to think and reason. And that's all we have to use. We have to use our reason and just ask ourselves, where would I go if someone was trying to kill me? Then you look at maps, answer the question, and go hunt like you're being hunted too.